this is Manisha. I am a second year PhD student working under Dr. Tuhin Maiti in lab functional and material devices in Isa Trivandrum. Hi, I am Girish Suresh Edson. I am from Pune. I completed my MSc from Pune University and I joined in Isa in August 2020 under Vera Reddy lab. So hi, I am Tejas. I work in uh, Dr. Ravi Marutachalam's lab. So he works on applied induction and I joined ICER TBM as an IPHD in 2018. PMRF is a national prestigious fellowship. This is meant for PhD students. It was first initiated in 2018-19 and uh, to improve the quality of research in various eminent educational institutions like ICERs, IITs, IAC or other central universities. PMRF stands for Prime Minister's Research Fellow. Uh, so there are two kinds of PMRF. So one is a Prime Minister's Research Fellow and another is Prime Minister's Fellowship for Doctoral Research. So the, the second one, which is the Prime Minister Research Fellow for Doctoral Research, uh, is hosted through SERB CII. So you need to have an association with an industry to have that fellowship. Whereas in the first one, the normal PMRF that we all hear about, it just requires, uh, you know, it, there are some certain eligibility criteria which you need, just need to pass. So basically, initially you have to fill in application form. Before that, actually uh, you fill in application form for uh, at the institute level. At the institute level, you have to uh, pr uh, provide some important documents, all your degrees and then some uh, research proposal, CV and a lot of stuff like that. And then later, then the institute will nominate you. After that, the nominations will be sent, the particular students which the institute has nominated, they, it will be sent to the PMRF committee then they will be looking at the, for the suitable candidate and after a rigorous selection process then they will be like sending you an offer letter and all that uh, there are two channels are there uh, one is direct uh, entry uh, another one is uh, lateral entry in direct entry whoever completed msc from uh, iits icer ic bangalore and uh, some universities are there central funded universities they have to complete msc 8 point something CGP, they can apply for direct entry. Uh, for MSc students, it is direct uh, entry. For PhD students, it is lateral entry. So in direct entry, what happens is there are two cases. One case is you are from a you have done masters from a PMRF granting institution, and f for that case, you have to score a CGP of eight on on a scale of ten, and then you have to apply for the PhD in some PMRF, PMRF granting institution, and they should offer a PhD position in their institute then you can uh, enter into it. Then uh, the, for the other uh, universities, other than the PMRF granting institutions, if you have done masters from them, then you should have a gate score of more than 650. For the PhD students, it would be lateral entry. In that, uh, for the first year, the uh, suppose I have done masters and I'm going for PhD, then it is only first one year window in the start of PhD that you can apply for it. But for the people who have done BTEC, engineering degree, and then they are going for uh, PhD, then it is a 24 months window that they can apply for PMRF and you can at most uh, apply twice using uh, by the lateral entry. So and also they should have uh, scored a CGP of 8.5 on the scale of 10. Whoever is uh, applying for lateral entry uh, should be um, uh, publication. It's increasing our uh, possibility to get the PMRF. Firstly, institute is Institute has a one, uh, panels, they are selecting and they are selecting on basis of grades, uh, whoever have get good grades, they are also some, they are checking some rankings. After that, they are coming to the publications, whoever have great publications, they are going to getting PMRF. Because of this COVID, uh, there is no interview, only depends on our qualities, whatever grades and research proposals. It all started in the quarantine, so I had nothing to do. So I was just checking uh, if there are any fellowships available. So uh, th there was this fellowship, Prime Minister's Fellowship for Doctoral Research. So I was just going through it and it, for its eligibility, you don't need any CGPA or you don't need to be cert from certain institutes. So the only main thing that you want, that they expect you to have is, you should have a collaboration with an industry so basically the first time I just randomly I went all out. I just try, I mailed a lot of different industries and I and the first like five to ten times I failed to convince them that 
my research is good enough for you to you know is applicative and it will be a good use and then finally i found tata rallis so the industry pmr is the half of your amount comes from serb cii and the half from the industry the industry pmr if i mean it's uh, the deadline is from the start of your phd to 14 months it's an open ended scheme so you can apply at any time so i guess it is once you can apply there are around 1000 nominations which uh, by the institutes uh, i told you like including isers iits iics and so on and then around four uh, like after that uh, selection process around 400 500 students they select there are almost 35 institutes in under the pmrf umbrella 5 to 15 students will be selected from every institute that depends on the strength and the quality of the institutes uh, in, uh, students also there is an upper limit also around 3% which can be selected uh, like upper limit 3 percent which can be selected among the phd candidates for every institute in the industry related one it has a maximum uptake of 100 fellows per year but uh, from past few years it has been i mean consistently above 30 30 to 35 yes there is a list of benefits i would say first you can say you get a motivation to stand out second you will have more responsibilities so in that sense you will become a responsible person uh, you are getting a good fellowship so you, that you can use if you are an experimentalist suppose so you can use it for buying lab consumables and equipments and stuff like that and for uh, and also attending conferences for uh, theoreticians they can uh, use it for attending conferences and attending webinars going for workshops and so on per year they are uh, giving 2 lakhs contingency to work your independent work if you want and this fellowship also increase the our responsibilities to work more otherwise they will discontinue to institute fellowship otherwise they will completely discontinue yeah, we are getting more money but uh, responsibility also and uh, it's increasing one very important thing is every year you have to submit a report to them so what whatever you have done the whole year you have to submit that and it it is actually very important if uh, they will see okay it is not up to the mark they will stop the fellowship so that's that is actually the pressure they are all centrally funded uh, fellowships so one thing i would like to i mean mention that there would be a consistent review committee that each year or each semester will have to present your work so that they'll scrutinize your work you'll have to defend your work so it's a process for us we have to uh, take in weekly one lecture how to go outside ITIs polytechnics this government engineering college this is responsibility extra list we have as a fellowship name is like prime minister research fellowship the nation is you are an investment to the nation so na- the nation is investing on you to get uh, an output of something that is beneficial to the nation so your fundamental question or your aim should have a bigger impact like you should it should have a vision that you can move forward think that the fellowship is credited to my account so in that way it's okay if i'm using it for being an experimentalist i have to use it in like buying lab consumables like uh, some you know small equipments or some chemicals or then i told you right attending conferences and so on but one thing is there that i always have to consult with my supervisor because you know he is more knowledgeable in a sense that what to spend and how much to spend and where to spend so in those things yeah i do consider like his opinions we have complete independence but uh, it always it always depends on your peer groups so let's say if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend then your independence is all on them so yeah in terms of applications if i say which is more understandable for a layman so it is data storage application we are going towards a computer market everything is digitalization uh, digitalizing and all that so that's why we are aiming for a universal memory which will have all the key advantages suppose like for low power consumption or high aerial density suppose you know uh, you we are decreasing the size of the electronics that there was a big computer then small and then tablets likewise generation. yeah so it's like every generation you have a smaller electronic so we are looking for like higher density like higher aerial density electronics and then low power consumption i told you and then low cost of fabrication all those things we want to merge into a single thing so we we are basically working on memory devices which have all these advantages single term we call it universal memory 
so this is application wise if i go into more physics and technical side then it is we are working on thin films so thin films which involve transition metal oxides and through uh, like there are a lot of structures we can different structures we can use to make them and there are a lot of mechanism then you can go forward with and make a better uh, structure organic synthesis uh, driven by visible photoredox catalysis okay so there are a lot of points to be considered while writing a good research proposal it is one of the most important part of the application i would say because that's where a person will judge what is your research what you are aiming for uh, it has to be a uh, problem specific that's very important and that problem should aim for you know something for society it help it should help for uh, to uh, the society to grow Uh, like for the sustainable development or something which is society friendly and like that it should not be long it should be concise and clear it should have a proper work plan at at every stage of your phd what you will be doing it should be ambitious but at the same time it should be executable within your uh, you know phd duration our proposal should be application based it it will increase the chances of acceptance and it should be novel useful in my chemistry i can tell it should be useful in the pharmaceutical industries natural product industries it should be convenient to handle in your statement of purpose or your research proposal that you give you should always mention you know the outcome out of out okay. of it the outcome uh, or the significance of your research the pmr of grant uh, granting institutions have the better research infrastructure so in that way if you are going for a very ambitious project you know that there is more possibility that you will be able to get it successful in those institutions so maybe in that way but i just hope or maybe it gets extended to other institutes as well in the near future it does get an imbalance but there is also an unity for example if certain someone gets a good fellowship and the certain someone is not getting a fellowship so the the other would be driven to do something more and uh, you know it it creates a healthy competition among the phd community you know it drives one another individually i'll go to the points one by one first is your research proposal i mentioned everything it should be uh, it should not be long elaborative it should be concise clear it should have the work plan proper it should have this timeline kind of a thing that for every stage what you your goals and it should be uh, like a problem specific which help which will help the society in the uh, for the next generation second thing will be uh, your publications which is an important factor so like if you are doing really good in your masters i would recommend like i would suggest that you can get if you can get get good results in your masters and get publications it will be really good so also if you are you if you have some submitted application uh, publications then also you can get, attach in your application form so that's one, another point third thing is uh, recommendations which is very important so you should from the start all only you should find good recommendations for yourself i'm really grateful to my recommenders who put kind words for me the fourth point would be this point is uh, what i would say is how you are standing out uh, like how you can differentiate between the other candidates right between you and the other candidates so it will it can reflect in your cv so if you have you know some national international awards or if you have some uh, good scores in national examinations or some good you know olympiads or something so then you can actually really should add it it should i think it will certainly give you extra points try hard uh, and uh, if for the normal i mean uh, the pmrf not the industry one so you'll have certain eligibility criteria for example you have to maintain a cgpa so my guide dr ravi maruthu chalam asks me to dream about my projects like literally dream about my projects and he also asks me to have a romantic relationship with the project that i am going through so i mean part to understand it completely uh, do hard work in smartly because uh, you need uh, more than 8.5 and after that also you have so many uh, so much competition is here your publication or your research work will help you to increase the chances masters itself you should try you know going into the research there what i feel is the research institute is the best place to have that feeling i wish that i if i would have started long before like uh, you know going into the research having the feel having the feeling of research and all 
so then i might have got some good results during the masters itself and then come up with good papers and all i did not know anything right i just started from the scratch and there were points because i used to mail a lot of industries as i said and i used to get rejected from each one of them so if i knew that okay this is how it is like 99% of the time you are going to fail so you know just is just after give it after a point you just go for it i mean you don't you don't get uh, demotivated by the small rejection letters or the rejections that we face